now to jump into our Arcano plan. <laughs> Ready to go, Snake? So, no, maybe. Just silence. Okay? <laughs> Snake? Yeah. <clears throat> oh no, our flower petal. This is why you should take the like the whole flower snake. Farewell, boss. We knew you well. I told you you could trust me. Uh oh. <laughs> and then she crashes the plane. Ah, we don't need this anymore. Yeah, my mission's done. Oh no, our bur um, actually don't know what those are called. What the turbine? Yeah, turbine. Our turbine. Snake. Ocelot. We're not done yet. <laughs> I kind of envision. You know, the, uh, the floaty vehicle being like an elderly thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For some reason. I think it's Ocelot's hair. Maybe. Goodbye, hovercraft. <laughs> we knew you well. And then Snake's got like a red piece of metal. No, not, not, not our utility belt. I had three rare snakes in that. No, four. Goddamn. Now he's got to get another hush puppy. Uh... I still don't see how uh, headbutts are ever, like, a good thing to do. They shouldn't be. Yeah, it seems like, you know, when you do one, you're kind of just hurting both both people at the same time. Well, to be fair, like, punching, like, would hurt both people at the same time, too. Like, fighting hurts. Don't punch like a wimp. Well, I mean, it's like equal and opposite reactions, like... Ooh, that should have rattled Eva a little more, a bit. Uh, kind of depends on how the seat is built, really. Come on, boss, I killed your ass in the CQC. Give me some credit. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> it's like Snake just suddenly forgot how to do CQC. Ah, uh, man, I gotta train him up all over again. <laughs> no, this time he gets a training montage. <laughs> hey, Ocelot knows CQC too. Ah, uh, he's cheating. I like that really big smile Snake has. This is really, really smug. It's great. Yeah, it, it's awesome. I picked up a few new moves. A few? Yeah, Jesus. More like all of the new moves. Ah, see, he's cheating. It doesn't feel right to shoot an unarmed man. But I'll get over it. Eva. You know, now that I think about it, I'm not actually sure if, like, you don't have the single action army, like, during the, the whole escort mission. Because <laughs> as far as I can tell, you only have the one, and you give it to Eva in the cutscene, so... They're hard to replace. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, Ocelot has. Oh, that's what. That's why he has all of them. Yeah, he bought the entire market. That makes sense now. Yeah. All right. You know, Eva's kind of a bitch to give you an unloaded firearm. 
I'm not sure she realized it was unloaded, honestly. You should count your shots. So, the special R1 cutscene here is just watching Ocelot uh, juggle. Do his thing? Yeah, it really doesn't matter. Like, it, it's always the same, like, which one's the loaded one, which one's the unloaded one. Aww. That's no fun. So hey, pick a gun and then it's quick draw. It's cool stuff. Pick a gun and then kill or be killed. Snake. No. Not that name. Kind of was a dumb response. You're not like, a snake, <laughs> and I'm not an ocelot. Like, Man, of course he knows names. at this point. By now, that his his code name is Snake. My name is Ademska. What's yours? Ademska. Hmm. There's an Adam here. There's an Eva and a Snake here. Plain name. But who is the Apple? I won't forget it. Hmm. It's got Volgan. <laughs> no, no, it's one of the guns. But Volgan is red. He's Come also on. dead. Well, someone had to eat the apple, no? Okay, so... Ah, uh, you didn't think this through, Nick, did ya? <laughs> nope. Smarty pants. Okay, so you gotta pick one of the guns. Uh, you also don't have any of your equipment, because Ocelot threw it out. And, uh, we're gonna go with the right gun. Ah, uh, we're not gonna see the bonus content? Well, I might put it in a bonus video. Ah, oh, what a chip. I'm not getting, getting my money's worth. <laughs> Th this guess is the most goodies, trust me. Like, picking the right gun. How many paces was that? Six? Uh, I thought it was five paces. I, I, I don't know. I didn't see. They're not they're not following standard dueling rules. Okay, so basically just wait until shoot until someone like um shoots. We don't we have the unloaded gun, and we can't do any spinning because this is supposed to be serious time. Oh no, we got shot! <laughs> Game over. <laughs> it's a blank. <laughs> Won't that still uh, cause some harm? No. No? No. Blanks unless unless the blank was um was made of a material, then no. Oh no, but I'm saying like they're they're close aren't they like close enough that like there'd be some like vision or Hearing loss. Well, I mean, yeah, because you're in an enclosed space and all that. But so we meet again. John. I mean, <laughs> I'm assuming that everybody in this has uh, varying cases of tinnitus. Okay. Fine. So, yeah, whatever. I love watching that stupid little like roll when he gets to the water. Yeah, like how deep is the water? Probably deep, pretty <laughs> deep, but like he was going at like a high horizontal velocity, so. I don't know. I'm sure he was trying really hard to look cool. <laughs> also, um, I hope you noticed that Ocelot uh, gave, let us keep the revolver before he left. So, what you're saying is we have to shoot the engine back to life. <laughs> yes, that's, that's how we're gonna get out of this alive. No, th this, uh, is this a MIG or WIG? What do you mean? It, was our vehicle a... Was it... Did Eva call it a MIG or a WIG? I forget. No, no it, it should be an Urcano plan. Oh. Well, this thing operates on uh, Mario 64 wing cap rules, basically. Sure did. I think that might have been it, actually. No. <laughs> but yeah, we did it. We survived a mountain range, and oh no, it's the flowers. <laughs> and the horse consumes, boss. Bye, horse. <laughs> I like how even it has a name, horse. <laughs> Yeah, they're 
but it's always Migs. We've come too far to let them stop us now. It's not like we can do anything though. Like we don't have guns left. Well, we have an unloaded revolver. There's no way we can outmaneuver them. Throw the revolver. Duh. Yeah, we'll just disable their turbine. I mean, if you if you hit the jet engine, you'll be fine. Weapon systems on. Locked on target. I got tone. <laughs> you got tone from like you were great. ten feet. <laughs> I I don't quite think you you know you know what debris means. <laughs> Man, Snake's been smiling a lot this whole update. <laughs> or this video, I mean. Snake's in love. Volk 19, this is Control. Stand by for a direct order from the chairman. Volk 19, return to base immediately. Seriously, they're so damn close. Read me. This is a direct order from Comrade Khrushchev. <laughs> you, you don't need rockets to lock on so closely. Understood. Probably not, no. No, no, it's not a probably. <laughs> you don't. Okay, I'll believe you. You're the expert here. The <laughs> We're alive! Well, think about it this way. In World War II, and even World War I, you had planes that were shooting at each other with machine guns, and debris was knocking their planes out. Now you um. want to introduce a rocket into this sequence <laughs> at, at closer distances <laughs> <laughs> where the debris is well, going to kill you. The mix okay. Most likely under orders from Khrushchev. Is this his way of helping us? Who knows? Maybe he didn't want things to get messier than they already are. Or maybe he just wanted us to owe him one. Yeah, what Snake doesn't know is there's like 50 nukes on, on that plane. Yeah, if, if that back. goes, then uh, so does Just Russia and maybe a little bit of Germany. I'm sending someone out to uh, Manchuria? Like, this is clearly... I, I still don't remember where this is. <laughs> where this takes place. Don't keep them waiting. That's a good question. Yeah, maybe someday I'll look it up. Maybe. Probably not, though. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, man, the extra 2000 model radio. Oh, man. I've been trying to get one of those for years. Man, do you know how many, just like, the wavelengths that thing gets? It's crazy. I can imagine. Like, that's why I want it. <laughs> what are you going to do now? Go back to the KGB. You can hear radio frequencies out to Saturn. It's crazy. That's amazing. I can communicate with aliens. I've left America behind me. Just don't let the dog, you know, this country. control your actions. You'll be fine. <laughs> this is a really nice place. You know, cozy. And I still owe you a warm. Is that part okay, of the Eva, seriously. Or Zip it up it or take it off. <laughs> it's getting ridiculous. <laughs> is it an invitation? Well, I mean, they just got back from the job. They just want to relax, unwind, enjoy mm. some wine. Mm. I don't know about that one. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, Snake took off his bandana. I don't take orders from anyone <laughs> That's when he's off the job. Oh no! They're gonna stain the rug! Okay. Eh, whatever. They haven't stated what kind of rug it is, and therefore we shouldn't care. Now, if it was a Persian rug, then, like, of course. Well, at least it wasn't on the animal skin. Eh, give it a couple minutes. Oh no. <laughs> ah, there we go. Talk about a buzzkill. You gonna get that snake? Always. <laughs> Every time this happens. Okay, was that necessary? What if that was important? It's never important. The big paramedic telling you the, the dangers of venereal diseases. <laughs> I was thinking that was exactly it, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Snake, wear a condom. <laughs> Ooh, 
Or it's like Major Zero telling you, like, congratulating you on banging the girl because that's what James Bond would do. It could go either way, really. <laughs> Although I'm not sure they were really doing that because Snake still has his, pa- his pants on. Like, he was using an ancient Tibetan technique. I'll tell you about it after the video. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Scholars tell us that the first spy in history was the snake in the book of Genesis. In wow, it all comes full it was circle. Who was tempted by the snake in the Garden of Eden. But this time around, it was I who tempted the snake and got away with the forbidden fruit of knowledge. Forgive me, snake. You don't mean it. I don't believe you. Yeah. Also, where that- I don't- oh, oh, that picture was from, um... The, the cave. Oh. I was wondering where that came from. That's an elaborate shadow puppet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I can't believe she lied to us in the end. I don't have... I don't follow anybody's orders. And then clearly... She's under orders from somebody. God damn. I mean, at least this explains the whole why Boss would try to save Eva. Mm. First of all, I have to apologize. I wasn't sent by Khrushchev. <laughs> She's recording this uh, over top of him. <laughs> I'm an agent of the People's Republic of China for the General HQ 2nd Department of the People's Liberation Army. So, who would have thunk it? She's a Chinese spy. Huh. And I'm sorry. Chinese. She was born in Idaho, by the way. I guess that explains the um, C96. Is that her gun? Yeah, because it. Remember, she mentions it's a Chinese copy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that explains why she had a Chinese copy. Right. My mission was to find out where Volgan was hiding the police. Kind of a dead giveaway now you, if you think about it. So in retrospect, yeah. She's kind of terrible at being a spy. The two NSA codebreakers who defected in 1960 were actually both men. Okay. How does nobody know that? <laughs> yeah, like it, Snake has the excuse not being able to look it up <laughs> now, but like on zero. <laughs> yeah, like, they, they should at least be able to go check. And you and so Like, I don't blame Sigint, because Sigint's all about guns and, and poo golems. The philosopher's but, you know, originally held in common between zero? The Come on. Soviet yeah, like, I, I don't understand why he, of all people, didn't look it up. Let the Russians and the Americans take it all for themselves. The Chinese government had its eye on the legacy, too. Greedy bastards. I got the film containing the legacy. And also the nuclear missile launch data from the Shagohad. You know, they've got like... What, how much is the, the Philosopher's Legacy again? Like several billion or whatever? Uh, yes. Yeah, so that's like, what, two bucks for every person in China? <laughs> I think, really, yeah. really kind of useless to, to use it on them. Mm. Now, if they use it in, say... Everything has gone Rhode Island. Thanks It'd be like several million per person. Oh yeah. I'm gonna move to Rhode Island. <laughs> I'm an or the island of Rhodes, I should say. <laughs> Oops. I was raised in a joint US Soviet Chinese facility to become a sleeper agent. How would no one find this out? Collecting children from all over the world. As a result, I'm indistinguishable no. from an American. So it didn't surprise me when you and Volgan couldn't tell the difference. I mean, she was American born and raised, I guess. Right from the but the boss knew. She knew because before the war, she was at one of the philosopher's schools, too, as an instructor. The boss was the only one I couldn't fool. She was the only one who knew I was a fake. So she was brought there at a young age and yet still knows like a ton of stuff about America. At the time, I couldn't understand it. Yes. But now, sure. I think I do. She probably <laughs> had to do a lot of like American like cultural she study. Need to know the truth. Well, she chose me. I don't to know. Tell you. 
Like, you gotta know a lot of stuff if you wanna blend in really well. Yeah, but like, you know, it's still the 60s and stuff, so like, it's not instantaneous. Oh, yeah. And I would assume that like, well, there's only so much you can, that, that would be like illegal to bring across, but if you're playing a secret agent or whatever, it seems like that might be a little harder. I don't know. Yeah. This is why we're not spies. <laughs> Well, that's that's what you used to think. Oh man. Yeah, sorry, chaos, but I'm a sleeper agent for the Chinese government. <laughs> you realize the NSA is listening in on this. Well, I'll take my chances. I'm in Canada, so really, they can't do anything to me. Damn. I just wanted you to know. Sorry, I'm in Alaska. Wink, wink. <laughs> This looks like a pretty nice neighborhood. Everybody seems to take pity on Snake. Yeah. <laughs> is, is that because they, they're like, oh man, i never seen him smile. I also, just want to uh, give him something to live for. Sucks that his um, real player just broke right after that. <laughs> like, what is this, Mission Impossible? Uh, well, she booby-trapped him. Oh no. Yeah, she was like, I, I hope he listens to the one message I, list, I left him. Yeah, I hope he doesn't listen to his um his records first. She was a hero who died for her country. She carried out her mission knowing full well what was going to happen. Self-sacrifice. Because that was Digging, come on, why are you wearing your jumpsuit? This is not the time. <laughs> So, um, you're not gonna see, like, the R1 prompt show up here, but there is a special R1 in this scene. Uh oh Don't worry, what? I got it. So when you focus, you, you see Nixon's like, I am not a crook. I hereby award you the title of Big Boss. And in retrospect, that is kind of a shitty title. <laughs> you are a true patriot. Snake just looks at the president like, you call me fat? Okay, so, so around here, when he's trying to shake your hand, or Snake's hand, like, if you press R1, you'll see Snake's one of you, as usual. And if you pan over to the left, hey! <laughs> What's he doing here? How does nobody see him? Snake's the only one. But at the moment, he's a little bit, um, distressed because he's thinking about things. Well, I kind of would be too. There's a lot of stuff to drop on him. Yeah. Like, he's being commemorated for killing basically his mother. Lover. <laughs> I like how everybody. They just really want to get a handshake in. You know. Or DCI. Someone like him to handle our top secret sneaking missions for us. But this unit's gotta be better than Fox. A man who combines the qualities yeah. of a soldier and an agent. Maybe we should name it after the boss's defection I don't know, was a, a foxhound. Yeah. It, was it can't just be one animal, it has to be two. So they could get their There's been the cobras, fox, let's do hound? Nah, that's <laughs> the hmm. Wasp. No, that won't work either. And destroy the Shagohut at the same time. They should have had like or Shark Bite. That would have like been a cool Oscar team name. Oh yeah, that that'd be pretty nice. Man, I gotta I'm gonna think of some some cool team names. I think I think the thread should do that too. <laughs> be some cool participation. But then something happened that no one could have predicted. I don't buy this honestly. Like, why how, why isn't wasn't this predictable? <laughs> like Volgan was clearly like a mental. Yeah, seriously. Like I, I don't buy that. No one would have thought that he would like someone there would have wanted to play with their new toys. Yeah, let's get this crazy dude who who might have billions of dollars and is clearly trying to attempt a coup against his own government. Let's give him nukes. And that one of their own would have to do. But yeah. Um, the public couldn't be allowed to find out about it. Th this is some 
really heavy stuff. It's like this just drop on snake. Be the best way to keep the whole thing this also seems really weird because it's like if the public could never know, then the boss wouldn't be the boss to and snake just like not have to do anything? Be allowed to kill herself. Well, I mean, they wouldn't know that like the boss was really on um, America's side. Like, she herself was infiltrating Russia for the, the legacy. Yeah. But then Volgan fucked up the mission, so uh, this happened, and we had to kill her. Was a duty she had to fulfill. Yeah, I don't know. Out of duty, she turned her back on her own comrades. A lesser woman would have been crushed by such a burden. I mean, couldn't they have just given her like? Uh, given Volgan like stinger missiles that's what like drug cartels and stuff always try to get in future generations spy movies <laughs> it's always some sort of like anti-air rocket as a despicable traitor with no sense of honor and in Russia as a monster who unleashed a nuclear catastrophe she will go down in official history as a war criminal and no one will ever understand her so this is the same that. graveyard as in MGS4, right? Yes, this is the exact same graveyard. Okay. And like a true soldier, she saw it through to the end. That thing always gets me. But I think she wanted you, <laughs> of all people. Uh, I'm I'm a little soft for uh, MGS4's ending. Mm. I don't know. I just find this one really powerful. In your memory. Not as a soldier. Uh, coming up soon, there's also another hidden R1 prompt. But you know, Snake, you you probably so. shouldn't leave that there. You're probably, I think you're committing like That's why she a dozen you. felonies by doing that. <laughs> felonies beat can be damned. <laughs> I'm a war hero, damn it. Do what I want. The boss deserves no this, at least. Yeah. Take this her gun. Story, her debriefing will endure only in your heart. Voice acting's really well done. Mm -hmm. Everything she did, she did for her country. She sacrificed her life and her honor for her native land. And all she gets out of this is this tombstone that doesn't even have her name on it. She was a true. You know, I mean, why is Eva narrating this? Because this is like part of the tape that she left us. That traitor. Also, uh, this is a special R1. If you press R1 here in his final salute, you can see through his eyes and that they're teary, uh, tearing up. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how, like, Kojima comes up with, like, all this extra stuff that really would be so like minor filler mm. stuff like Sigan joining ARPA and developing the internet's prototype uh, Eva and, whoa that's Al Gore everybody uh. knows that <laughs> Eva vanished in Hanoi somewhere Foxhound was established like eight years after this no seven years then a year after that, the Le Enfant Terrible project. Oh man. But that's a story for another day. Next stop, Africa, where we're gonna start our own roaming circus. No, no, uh, no. Yeah. Our next stop is Cuba. Damn it. We're gonna start a, an ocean fun club. <laughs> Boy, those are my favorite. <laughs> So yeah, that's uh, Metal Gear Solid Three. Uh, that's really good. I I really enjoyed this. This is such a good game. <laughs> uh, just trying to see like who's getting credited that I may have missed. Also, that wasn't um. What president did you say it was? Uh, I made a joke about Nixon. Oh, but I knew it was gonna be. Yeah, it's like I want to say Kennedy. No, no, uh, Lyndon B. Johnson. Oh, well, shouldn't it be Kennedy in this at that point? Well, this game takes place wrong. in '64. Oh, look, I'm I'm Canadian. 
I'm as my na- my knowledge of your presence is as bankrupt as your knowledge of our prime ministers. <laughs> So, um, fun fact, the song is, um, was basically a holdover from an earlier draft of the game that Kojima licensed really early. Um, it's Way to Fall by, I forget the artist, it was like Starfall? Star Sailor? Is this used with, uh, this sounds so familiar with something that sh- I'm sure played with, uh, Ground Zeroes. I'm not sure. Phantom Pain. Hmm. This sounds so familiar. I swear they used it in in one of the promo trailers. No, the the songs they've used in those pro- promo trailers are um, uh, "Not Your Kind of People" by Garbage, um, or was it Garage? I can't remember. Uh, <laughs> a song called "Nuclear" and a song called "Elegia." Elegia. I don't know. Yeah, the song's called "Way to Fall," and it's by Star Sailor. No, I'm sure they use this. Oh man, this is gonna bug the crap out of me forever. So, how long? So, are we gonna see like stats after this whole thing? Yes, we will see stats after this. Oh, perfect. I gotta say, um, thanks to that guy in the one in the thread who uh, pointed out that, like, yes, the song or this game is super goofy at times, but like, that only makes the emotional parts hit really hard. Yeah, I think it's also you know, healthy for a game to be able to make to take a you know have a light side about it. Yeah, and like, it's not like jarring like some other games. Like, yeah, it, it, it's smart humor. It's not like. It's, it's not so disjointed that it really seems like a, a, an entirely different product. Yeah. It's, it's not all over the place. Like, there, there is a time and place for it to be goofy, and there's a time and place for it to be serious. Right, right. Overall, like, I just think MGS3 is, like, one of my favorite games of all time. Like... It, it's done so well, like the game, it plays really nicely, and it just looks really good, like, I still think the PS2 version looks good, like, even to this day. And, and this game was released in, what, 2005? 2004. 2004. I think Subsistence came out in like 2005, 2006? Hmm. Yeah, for a 2004 game, this is like really, really impressive. Yeah. Like, there's so much to it. And like, yeah. there's a lot you can do just, just even just, just for fucking with guards too. <laughs> like I, it's the sort of game I could see myself losing like 40 hours into it, and and just wonder like what, how much do I have left? And no, I'm I've still got like 75 percent left in the <laughs> game. Yeah. It's a shame that this game, like, followed MGS2, because, like, MGS2 sold, like, what was it, 7 million? And then that turned off, a, that game turned off so many people from Metal Gear Solid that, like, th- this game probably didn't do nearly as well as it could have. Right, right. I mean, it still did fantastically, like, 4 million units for just the Snake Eater version, I think. But still, like... But without that, that, uh, smear... On, on the entire series. Yeah. I suppose right. it also didn't help that, like, the Snake Eater camera just really sucked for certain areas, like Rosny Grad. Yeah, but, I mean, that doesn't... That's not really something that would have affect sales, would it? Well, you know how people are with, like, shh, bad camera. Yeah, I, but, I mean, was that really... Was that a point that a lot of people made Yeah, it was a really reviews? common complaint. In, in reviews, though? I'm not sure, actually. Because if you... You know, 2004. If you hadn't heard about it in a review, I would have assumed you probably wouldn't think about it. Because mm. that seems more like a complaint that you would have after you played the game. Well, I mean, I probably complained about it. Like, if I played Snake Eater for the first time and I got to, like, Rosengrad, like, trying to see where everybody is is a nightmare if you don't have, like, third person camera. 
for those right. tight spaces. Right. Would would you sell? Would you return your game because of that? Probably not. No. Yeah. So like again, I don't really think that it that would affect sales. Yeah. I think it's I think it's really just like you said the the fact that MGS2 came out and just wasn't what people were expecting. Yeah. Probably. I mean, I, I honestly think it's a little bit of both, but you know. It, it's been like 10 years. Like, who even cares anymore? <laughs> Hold on, let me do my, my best impression. Uh, Kojima uh, puts himself as the director. <laughs> yeah, he's right there. See? About? <laughs> I still can't believe that, that idiot of all people complains about that stuff. <laughs> And as for tradition with MGS games, there's a post credit scene. Yes, Gross oh, yeah. and the Granin Research Facility have both been wiped out without a trace. I understand, sir, but they were necessary sacrifices. Oh no, all those scientists. God, another yes, traitor. Has taken care of the boss themselves. I believe the White House will be satisfied. I can't believe you were there. Your time has finally arrived. Yes, the American president is relying on us to keep a lid on the whole affair. We've got him by the balls. It should make a valuable trump card in future negotiations. I mean, how true could that be? Yes, Chief Director. Like, of wouldn't the I'm Americans good. know about Volgan and his plan and the fact that he nuked the place? Because, uh, I mean, I, I get that, like, in official terms, you know, uh, boss is supposed to be the bad guy or bad girl. Yes, uh, it's me. But, I mean, in the hidden secret files, like, wouldn't they the know? Has accomplished her mission. I mean, like, the, the government probably knows, but public is assu probably right. assuming, like, it was all the boss. Yeah, yeah but, but my point is, like, they're trying to threaten the president of the United States who knows that yes, the, the Russians had screwed themselves over. Uh, I'm not sure, actually. Well, I mean, he, he could get debriefed by Big Boss. Because mm. <laughs> he was there, right? Yeah. So, anyway, um, turns out he, the, the film that Eva got was a fake. Only half the money was made oh, back no. to the United States. And uh, half the money is not in our hands. The KGB How does that work? Legacy. I don't know. Because if Eva didn't have the right one, been so then Snake had the good one. No, 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 no. Ocelot had the good one. That's right. Eva took the film from Snake. By the Davy Crockett yeah, but as well. then how did the United States get half the money? Yes, that was well, the boss's work, too. Well, we're about to find out. God, I'm so confused. Speaking of which, I've obtained something from well, I mean, that you might find. You, you know how Ocelot is. It's a revolutionary <laughs> new nuclear attack system. Perhaps it might just come in handy someday. It's called Oyama face paint. It's so <laughs> weird. Yes, we have John, I mean Snake, to thank for that. Khrushchev believed it as well. Yes, they bought our story. It's all Granin's fault. Us. If someone had just destroyed the models, the it would be fine. It as well. And the Soviets still haven't discovered my true identity. Yes. They have no idea that I've been triple crossing. <laughs> triple crossing? You know, that gets a little confusing after a while. <laughs> I'll continue my activities as a contact for the new government. So, even back then, Ocelot was playing everybody's yes. side. It appears that no yeah, one knew Jesus. that I was Adam. Also, he had kind of a terrible code name, considering it's part of his real name, I think, of maybe. <laughs> I don't even know if Adamska is his real name. It's uh, Shalasamska, or whatever. So yeah, we were just talking with the uh, director of the CIA there. Holy. Ocelot's the ultimate spy. So then wouldn't all the money make it? Ah, whatever. Also, here are my stats. Oh man, you got the Suchinoko title. Yeah, that's the um, only title you will get if you um, catch the Suchinoko alive and bring it to the end of the game. You saved 58 times? I saved a, like once per map. Also, uh, here are the goodies you get for being the game. You get the single action army, Patriot, the camera, and you get some face paints that I think I already have, except for the infinity. Got a tuxedo. Oh yeah, tuxedo. And we got. Some I cameras. love the beach. 
<laughs> oh, I timed that so well with the end. <laughs> All right, join us next time. We'll go over some of the um, new game plus stuff. Cool.